Look, remember, the Republicans originally wanted $800 billion in tax cuts, and in December, they got $800 billion in tax cuts. So th that's a big, fat check. They got it. They got exactly what they wanted. Then at the beginning of February, they said that they wanted $32 billion in spending cuts. And guess what happened? Now, they got $33 billion in spending cuts if this deal is accurate. That's a billion dollars more than they originally asked for. That's another big fat check. So when it came to taxes, they got exactly what they wanted. When it came to uh, spending, they got exactly what they wanted. In fact, they held a rally today outside the Capitol, as you see there. You. The crowd was a little underwhelming, but they still had a lot of the heavyweights there. Uh, Pence was there, King was there, Bachman was there, all their top congressmen. Uh, and as usual, the message was as blunt as ever. They're not giving an inch. At 61 and a half billion, that's where the fight came down on HR1, the first CR. All right, so let's fight on that then. That's ground we've taken, let's hold it. Well, I mean, that's exactly what they say. They say, all right, I can't believe the Democrats have given us all this. Well, let's hold that ground and ask for more. Now, if we gave them $61 billion, everything they wanted, would it be good enough then? I think it's time to get serious, don't you? Yeah. And cutting 61 billion, in my opinion, is a starting point. It is not the goal. No, of course not. Because if you give them 61 billion, they can ask for 120 billion. If you give them that, they can ask for 240 billion. That's what the problem is when you keep giving and giving. You get you encourage Bachman, and she does that laser stare at you and goes, "Oh my God, I want more cuts." <laughs> All right. Now, but there's got to be some room to negotiate, right? Liberals in the Senate would rather play political games and shut down the government instead of making a small down payment on fiscal discipline and reform. I say, shut it down. Well, he's very clear on that. Shut it down. That's apparently what the Tea Party wants. But hey, don't trust me. Let's bring on a Tea Party guy and find out for ourselves. Justin Phillips is the founder of Tea Party Nation. Do you think Boehner should be fired if he agrees to the $33 billion? Uh, yeah, actually, I do think he should be fired. Uh, 30, as, as you quoted me accurately, $33 billion is not a cut. It's a joke. See, here's the thing, Justin, I, what I'm curious about. I mean, you get that you're negotiating with somebody, right? I mean, like, for example, uh, it, for the tax cuts, I hated them. I didn't want any of those tax cuts. I think they blow up the budget. I think they're a b terrible idea. But if you said to me $400 billion in tax cuts or $800 billion, I'd say, all right, I'll take the $400 billion. Because I'm negotiating with somebody. I get there's somebody on the other side. Do, do you get that in this process, that you have to compromise at some point? You, maybe you can compromise at some point. But when the house is on fire, you don't sit there negotiating about how long you're going to stay. You get everybody out. We have a $1.65 trillion deficit this year. Our national debt is now equal to our gross domestic product. When are we going to stop spending? When are we going to start bar uh, stop borrowing? But Justin, the what I'm hearing from you then in this regard, you say maybe I would compromise at some future date, but not today and not on this. So do no. you want 100%, you want $61 billion, and even if you got 100% of what you wanted, would you still want more? Right now, I want hundreds of billions of dollars in cuts. And hey, let me tell you something. A month ago, the Government Accounting Office came out with a report that said we could save hundreds of billions of dollars just by eliminating programs that are not working or that are duplicative. So I want to know, where is anybody in Congress, Republican or Democrat, why aren't these guys having fights on who, so over who gets to introduce the bill that says, let's cut hundreds of billions of dollars? Nobody's going to object to cuts of hundreds of billions of dollars that eliminate fraud and waste. Well, look, there aren't hundreds of billions of dollars in fraud and waste. I wish there were. That'd be sure easy. there are. The government those. accounting no, office says there are. No, no, that's not that's not how it works. Look, so at this sure point, it is. look at this point in, in your mind. Uh, obviously, Democrats in the Senate can't win. They, you have no interest in that. But John Boehner also can't win, right? I mean, if, even if he got you the sixty-one billion, you'd still want him fired, right? At this point, well, he's not committed to $61 billion. I don't even know if he's committed to $33 billion. Honestly, I don't know what the guy's committed to. He talks a great game when he gets out there on, on the road, talking to folks outside of D.C., but when he goes back up to D.C., uh, yeah, who knows what he's doing, but he's not cutting the budget, and that's but, what the American look, people Justin, wanted when they gotta, put him in power. you, you got to be live in the situation that you're in. I know, ideally, you'd cut it all. It'd be nothing. There'd be no government. We'd live in a wonderful, no, no, uh, you no. know, libertarian no, or an anarchy no, and no. rand inspired, uh, no. uh, sh uh, you know, Shangri La. And no. it'd be a uh, Halvala, Valhalla, I should say. <laughs> it'd be all these lovely things. But in this situation, the Democrats hold the Senate and they hold the White House. So why should they give you what you want because you want it really bad? Because 
the Republicans control the House, and nobody can make the Republicans in the House appropriate money. All right, well, then, all right, then the Democrats control the Senate, and nobody can make them do anything. So, right That's back right. at you. That's right. The Republicans can stand firm and say, guess what? We're cutting a whole lot out of this budget because we have a fiscal crisis here. Look what's going on in Europe. They have a debt crisis. How did they get there? They got into a lot of debt. Well, now, guess what look, America's doing? No, We're no. going into debt, too. No, Justin, we can see look, the road ahead of point. us. You're, look, if we wanted to have an argument about how to cut the budget, you would lose that argument massively, in my opinion. And I'll tell you why, okay? It's because you don't want to raise taxes at all and you're ignoring one side completely and I don't know how you feel about defense I'd be interested in that but you gotta cut defense even if you cut all the discretionary spending you want you still would have a trillion dollar deficit so you can you're doing you're going about it all the wrong way but that's not my point my point is look right now we've got a situation where the Democrats control the Senate and they control the White House. Why do you think they should bend to your will? That doesn't make any sense. You've got to compromise if you actually care about governing. How about, here's a reason why they should listen. We had a referendum in November, and guess what? The American people spoke loudly and clearly about what they wanted. So the Democrats need to pay attention. All because right, Justin, if they don't, ask you about that, they're going to be out the door in November. No, or I next hear November. you. I hear you. So let me ask you about that, because in 2006, the electors spoke very clearly, overwhelming victories for Democrats. Did you come out after that election and say, George Bush should stop it, and the Republican Party should stop it? We should just simply listen to what the Democrats say. No, absolutely not. Oh, really? Hey, no, absolutely not. And oh, you know why? Weird. Because we, no, it's not weird at all. You know why? The Republicans were acting just like Democrats. They were big money spenders back then. The American people got sick of it. They said, hey, no difference between the Democrats so, and the Republicans. So, hey, we'll put the other guys in so charge just for a while. So let me get this right. So when the Democrats win overwhelming victories, we should listen to the Republicans. And when the Republicans win overwhelming victories, we should listen to the Republicans. We should listen to the conservatives because they certainly make <laughs> a whole lot more sense than the Democrats do. But that, no, but that, that is not a logical argument. If you're talking about the mandate of the people in 2006 and 2008, huge mandates. That's why the Democrats control the Senate and the White House. Yes. But you're saying ignore that will of the people, just pretend that the will of the people. By the way, you know you guys are losing support, right? I mean, you see the polls, right? They, you're down to 47% popularity in, in March in terms of the Tea Party. You've lost how many po uh, points? Here, 19 points uh, since January of 2010. You get the sense that maybe your intransigence isn't really working with the American people? Hey, I'm reminded of the great quote from Disraeli. There's lies, there's damn lies, and then there's polls. <laughs> okay, well, the polls are inconvenient and logic is inconvenient. Okay, I hear you. All right, Justin Phillips, thanks for having the conversation. We appreciate hey, thanks it. thanks for inviting me. All right.